Hi, and welcome back to this video tutorial on quadratic functions and parabolas. And in the last video, if we recall, we, we did an example of uh, finding the vertex of a parabola where we did not have a factor in front of the x squared term. And uh, I showed you the method of completing the square. And what I wanted to do is to reinforce that method, but to use a little bit of a variation and have a problem where we actually have a constant term other than one in front of the x squared terms because it throws a little bit of a a little bit of a curveball into it, but it's not anything that we can't get over, but it just involves a, a couple of more steps. And I also wanted to show you a little bit of a different technique for factoring uh, to find the roots of quadratic functions for those, of course, those quadratic functions which are factorable. And so let's try this. Let's try this problem. Why? And uh, Let's uh, do a couple of things here with this drawing tool. Y is equal to 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. And you'll notice that we have a constant term in front of the x squared here. And that makes things a little bit different. But in terms of factoring this out, what I do, and the first thing I try to do in these types of questions, is I take the first term and I take the last term, multiply them together, which gives us minus 10. And I try to find some factors of minus 10, which added together will give us plus 3. And, you know, it's not definitely not going to be, it's not definitely not going to be negative 1 and 10. There's, there's no way they're going to add up to give us 3. It's going to be some sort of combination of 2 and 5. And what it's going to be in, actual, in actuality is negative 2 and 5 because negative 2 plus 5 will give us 3 and negative 2 times 5 will give us minus 10. So we found two factors which are suitable for factoring out this quadratic function. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this function like so. 2x squared, we, we leave that the same. Then we're going to have we have our minus 2, so we're going to have a minus 2x. And then we have our 5, so plus 5x and minus 5. And what we did was we compared the second equation with the first. We really just rewrote our 3x. And as negative 2x plus 5x, because negative 2x plus 5x just gives us 3x. And you'll notice that. 2x squared and a negative 5 are the same as our original question. But what this allows us to do is, now what we're going to do is we're going to, let me make this crystal clear. We're going to factor out these two terms and these two terms here. And so when we factor this term, what's in common? We've got a 2x in common. I'm going to pull out a 2x. We're left with an x here, and then we're left with a 1. And in the last term, we've got a 5 in common. We're going to pull that out, and we're left with an x minus 1. And in this last uh, expression that we have here on the right-hand side, we've got an x minus 1 in common in both terms. So we're going to pull out an x minus 1, and we're left with a 2x and a 5. And so we factored the original quadratic function into x minus 1 times 2x plus 5. And now we're going to find the roots. And that boils down to solving this equation. And as we did in our previous examples, if this term multiplied by this term is going to equal a 0, then one of these terms has got to be 0. And so, in fact, we can boil this down to solving two separate small equations. Let's break this up into some smaller equations. And so in this case, x minus 1 is equal to 0. That means x is going to be equal to 1. So that's one root. And in this case, we've got 2x is equal to negative 5. We'll bring this 5 over the other side. So to change the sign, divide everything, everything through by 2. And we've got negative 5 halves. And so there we go. We found the roots of this quadratic function. And just to, again, uh, make it visualizable for you, to make it easier for you to see. 
let's draw our set of axes here and we've got our y axis we've got our x axis let's plot the point one that's going to be our point one negative five axis is going to be somewhere over here it's just an approximation this is the roots of our function and, the, and our parabola is going to pass through our roots the parabola cuts through the x-axis at the roots and our vertex is going to be somewhere right smack dab in the middle between negative five halves and one and uh, and so and where is that exactly going to be well what's the distance what's the distance between these two x coordinates it's really it's really just going to be one plus five halves which is just if we take a common denominator it's going to be an atom is going to be seven halves and so the distance between negative five halves and one is seven halves and then if we take that seven halves and divide it by two we're going to get seven fourths which is the halfway distance between those two points and if we take that seven halves if we take that halfway distance to half the distance between these two points which is seven fourths and we add that to negative five halves we're going to get if we get to use a common denominator negative ten plus seven over four is going to be negative three fourths and so negative three fourths is the halfway point between negative five halves and one and I'll just to make that clear I'll just show that on our graph here negative three fourths is really it's really that point right there so that's going to be the x coordinate of our vertex now keeping that in mind let's let's go to the use the technique of completing the square okay and let's 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 walk through that so uh, let's go back to our original quadratic equation which is y is equal to 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 and I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial that that our uh, previous example we did not have a factor in front of the x squared but this time we do and and that makes things a little bit different and what we're going to do is so get rid of that factor so we're going to divide everything thing everything through by 2 2x squared over 2 3x over 2 and 5 over 2 and let's keep on going and so basically we're left with an x squared plus a 3 halves x minus 5 over 2 we've got a y over 2 and what, what we showed you last time is that the first step the second step in doing this question this these completing the square problems is after we've gotten rid of the factor in front of the x squared we take the factor in front of the x which is three halves we divide it by two and we square it and when we have stacked fractions like this and we're dividing fractions we take we just take the top fraction leave it as is we take the bottom fraction and invert it two over one is just one over two inverted two over one inverted gives us one over two and we square that Multipl multiplication of terms 3 times 1 is 3 2 times 2 is 4 we square that we get 9 over 16 9 over 16 and so what we have to do now is we take our y over 2 we take our x squared from this our equation here that we divided all the by two to get this x squared alone without any constant term in front of it we've got our three halves x and now we're going to take our nine sixteenths add it and subtract it and again you might ask well why are we doing this it looks pretty complicated but if you compare if you compare this expression with this expression everything is the same except what we added and subtracted here but really we've added nothing to the right hand side because 9 sixteenths minus 9 sixteenths is of course zero but really what this allows us to do is to write this first three to write these first three terms as a perfect square and 
So let's take our y over 2 and rewrite this. So re rewrite it. The first three terms of a perfect square will give us x plus 3 over 4 all squared. And then we're left with a minus 9 sixteenths minus 5 half. And let me just write that a little more clearly. And so we are almost there at the end. Getting this into a vertex form. And explain what the vertex form is. And we get 9 16 minus 5 halves. Our common denominator is going to be 16 minus 9 minus 40 all over 16. And we're left with y over 2 is equal to x plus 3 quarters all squared minus 49 over 16. And then we got to remember to multiply everything back through by a 2. Originally we divided everything by 2 to get rid of the term in front of the x squared. And so we multiply everything back by 2. And voila. And, and, and the vertex form in general is given by ax minus h squared plus k. And we'll do many more of these problems, so don't don't worry if things start are looking foreign to you. But in this particular expression, the h and the k h k taken as a coordinate will give us the coordinates of the vertex and so in this particular example our h is going to be if you look here our h is going to be negative three-fourths and our k is going to be negative 49 over 8 and really negative three-fourths should not be a, a surprise to us because when we use our technique of using the symmetry of parabolas, we found that the x-coordinate of our vertex is negative 3 fourths. I hope this helps you. I hope that this tutorial uh, clarifies certain things. It may bring up uh, some more questions, but uh, as and when we do some more problems, hopefully things will become a lot more clear and uh, completing the square will become second nature. So in the next tutorial, we'll do another example of completing the square. Thank you and see you next time.